Games are getting expensive. If you want to play Modern Warfare 2 2, which is pretty damn similar to Modern Warfare 1 2, then you'll have to pay an absurd $70. If you want to play Gotham Knights, you better be ready to spend another 70 bucks on something that feels like a downgrade from the last game in the franchise, which by the way, came out 7 years ago. Sure, it may be worth it for a lot of people who enjoy the big AAA games more than anything, but for me, I'd prefer to save my money. I'd rather play some cool, unique, and charming indie games that I can buy for a fraction of the price. Like Vampire Survivors, which I paid $5 for. I kept seeing this fella pop up on my Steam page, and I kept thinking, who in their right mind would actually want to play this? My smooth-ass brain didn't even understand what the hell was going on. Why is there so much happening on the screen, and why do I feel like I need an Adderall to comprehend this? But oh no, my friend, weak little Robocast was wrong, and after playing Vampire Survivors for dozens of hours, I officially have no life now. I go to bed seeing blue gems and circles of moving objects in my sleep, and I awake to find out that I wasn't actually sleeping, but that I was in a trance while playing Vampire Survivors for 7 hours straight. This game is the game for me right now, and if I could help you understand what's actually happening on your screen, you will also inevitably be sucked into the void. And if you've played it, you're probably in the same boat, so I ask you to drop a comment right now and tell other people what your experience with this game has been like. The only control in this game is to move around. Mouse, keyboard, racing wheel, fucking DJ hero controller, I don't care. Pick up your device of choice, move around, and don't get hit by this guy, or this guy, or all of these guys. You are a vampire, and you have to survive against hundreds of millions of billions of- God damn, there's a lot of enemies and they never seem to end. You gotta stay aware and active at all times, and do this while hearing the enchanting ding of a Vegas casino that inspires you to survive and get your bread up. Each of your vampires start with different weapons and abilities, and while all of the weapons vary, they don't require any control other than moving around. Sounds kinda whack, I know, but I promise you it'll make sense in a minute. Let's take a look at the first character that you start with. Antonio. Antonio owns a pizzeria in southern New Hampshire and literally every other city in the world, and his weapon of choice is a whip. This whip has a mind of its own and fires occasionally to hit enemies around you. So you walk around hoping to successfully kill some enemies, and every time you do, you earn these little dopamine enhancing XP gems. As you gain gems, you level up by unlocking new weapons, passive abilities, or by upgrading your existing weapons. Now, your handy dandy whip fires at double the speed, you have a magic bible floating around your head for some reason, and some orbs that somehow shoot out of your body. You're killing enemies at a much faster rate now, which means you're gaining more XP, upgrading your weapons faster, and evolving your strategy. You don't control the weapon specifically, but depending on what you have, the way you play the game changes. And that's just Antonio. We have Bone Man who shoots bones, we have Lightning Guy, we have a witch with a cat that sprints around the map being a menace, we have Garlic Dude, my favorite, and so many others. They all start with their own weapons and buffs, and you could still gain the other weapons to upgrade your vampire to the ideal demon slaying machine. Sometimes I like to focus on defense to ensure that I could actually survive, sometimes I go for more targeted attacks like knives, and sometimes I try to equip myself with whatever can kill the most bad guys in my area with minimal effort. You don't want to just pick random upgrades. You want to use your wits to make the best combinations of weapons and abilities. Or focus on evolutions. Specific weapons can be combined with specific passive abilities, and you can use the chest that you get from killing bosses to evolve your weapon into something much cooler. So let's say you get a maxed out knife and a bracer, now you have an insanely overpowered machine gun knife. Or if you mix your cross boomerang with a wee bit of Irish luck, you have a sword that flies around the map and explodes at will. These evolutions are the real focus of the game, because if you don't evolve fast enough or focus on continuously upgrading the right abilities, you will die and you will never beat the level. You need to think about your damage inducing abilities to defeat enemies, and your defensive abilities to preserve your health, both mental and physical. Preservation is key in a game like this because you are in it for the long run. Just like we are on this planet, which is why I'm excited for today's sponsor, Established Titles. Established Titles is a fun and novel way to preserve the natural woodlands of Scotland while helping global reforestation efforts and making yourself look cool as hell in the process. You could buy at least one square foot of dedicated land on a private estate in Scotland and be able to officially call yourself a lord or lady because of a historic Scottish custom for landowners. You can even officially include it on dating profiles, plane tickets, and credit cards. 
Your certificate features a unique plot number where you can see the exact location of your land, and with every purchase, established titles works with one tree planted and trees for the future to support global reforestation efforts. I'm telling you right now, this is a great last minute gift idea, and with Christmas just around the corner, now is the best time to buy one for a friend or family member. Established Titles is actually running a massive sale right now, and if you use the code ROBOCAST10, you get an additional 10% off. Go to EstablishedTitles.com slash ROBOCAST10 to get your gifts now and help support the channel, and the environment in the process. Eventually, the map devolves into utter chaos, and you are fighting for your life like that dude from the Weather Channel who reports from inside of Hurricanes. Before long, you're overwhelmed, and you inevitably die by a horde of Minecraft Iron Golems. But it was a valuable experience, because throughout it, you gained a lot of gold which you can then use to unlock new characters, upgrade your base level stats, and improve your abilities to make your next run just a little bit easier. And you're now sucked in, and you'll spend eternity running in circles trying to collect every last scrap of XP on the map. That is the core gameplay loop of Vampire Survivors, but it is just the surface, my friend. See this timer? It's your enemy, your mission, and the countdown to your inevitable death. Levels scale based on how long you've survived, so when you get to the 20 or 30 minute mark, the world is going to be absurdly hard and you better make sure you brought a second pair of underwear. But what exactly is the end of a run? Well, to unlock the next stage, you have to get your character to an increasingly unobtainable level goal. To unlock stage 2, you need to reach level 20 in stage 1, and to unlock the final stage, you need to reach an absurd level 80 in the one before it. Each stage is more difficult than the previous, with harder enemies and tougher bosses, so it's an evolving process. This isn't really a game where you just beat a boss and continue on your adventure, never to look back again. No, this shit is like hard drugs, because you keep coming back to the same levels over and over, even if you've already beat them, to collect more coins and dive further into the wormhole for future levels. The destination is not as important as the journey, and that's why I, and thousands of other people, are currently addicted to this game. There are five main stages, ranging from a chill-ass grass field, a narrow and stressful library, a milk factory for some reason, a creepy tower that's way harder than it looks, and a big church that acts as the final level. There's also some challenge and bonus stages if you're into that too. While it doesn't sound like a lot, these stages do vary drastically in gameplay, and while you may go for a peaceful, lovely little stroll in the mad forest, good luck doing that in the library bro, because spoiler alert, it's not gonna happen. All of the stages give you a 30 minute time limit to reach that level goal. So in the fourth stage, if you want to reach level 80 before you run out of time and die to a grim reaper, you gotta use the coins that you earn in previous runs to upgrade your efficiency to where you can actually manage to get 80 levels in that amount of time. I hope that makes sense. All the bosses that you kill drop loot chests, and these loot chests can be a huge advantage in a run if you actually get lucky. When you open them, they either give you upgrades for your current weapons, or the evolutions that I mentioned earlier. But, if you ate Lucky Charms for breakfast, you can get 3 or sometimes even 5 items per chest, plus a bunch of gold that you can use for those upgrades. And you'll need all the chests and upgrades you can get, because the enemies in the first level feel like fruit flies compared to the shit that you see in later levels. You can just be chillin', taking it easy, and destroying everything, and then 500,000 skeletons come out of the abyss to ruin your hopes and dreams. But it's great, and the increasing difficulty helps to make this game so awesome. My friend, this game is made by one person, costs less than a Starbucks latte, has dozens of hours of playability, and has reviews that look like this. No, this isn't a snippet of the reviews. Let me speed it up a bit. They don't end. It's one of the most bang for your buck games I've ever seen, and if this video hasn't convinced you to play it, well, I don't really care because that's not my job. But have fun looking like a normie loser when you don't have any cool games under $5 to suggest to your friends. Even if it doesn't look like something you would like, I can almost guarantee that you will, because that's how I was. If you have played it, please drop a comment below telling other people what they're missing out on. A good comment can convince someone and give them something amazing to enjoy, so just keep that in mind if you ever want to explain to other people, drop it down in the comments below. And if you haven't played this, well, be prepared to sign your life away, my friend. Thank you guys for watching this video, and please give it a like if you enjoyed. If you have any review requests, drop those in the comments as well, and subscribe for more videos like this. I will see you guys next time, and peace.